Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Height, the Y40. Now their last case, the Y60, was an absolutely brilliant case and in fact it was one of my best cases of 2022. So I'm really looking forward to building in this case. Let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using ASRock's B650E Steel Legend Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using AMD's latest Ryzen 9, it's the 7900X. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm I.O. from ASUS, it's the ROG Ryo 3. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 at 5600 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe M.2 drive for this build. It's from Adata and it's their Legend 960 in one terabyte capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got Montech's brand new Titan Gold 1200 watt fully modular gold power supply. This is their brand new flagship power supply, which meets the ITX 3.0 standard, which importantly means it comes with a 12 volt high power connector, which is going to be perfect for our graphics card. And for the graphics card, we're going to be using the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti. For case fans, I'm going to be using Lian Lee's SL Infinity Uni fans in white. And the final part for today's build is some white cable extensions. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's get building. So as usual, I'm going to make a start by preparing our case. And as we go, I'll point out the case's main features. So to remove our tempered glass panel, all we need to do is pull it out from the back. And then it can simply be lifted up and away. Taking a look at our other side panel, you'll notice that Height have gone with a very similar design to the Y60. And one of the things you'll really notice as we go through the case is the attention to detail that Height have taken. There's a lot of features that are added purely for aesthetics. If you look here, you'll notice that you can actually see through the vent here. This is for airflow on the side of the case. But actually, this is just a decorative here and there's actually no perforations. To remove the side panel, it's the same as the tempered glass. We just simply pop it out from the top and lift it up and away. Taking a look at the side panel we've just removed, you'll notice the perforated area that I pointed out to you. So again, we've got lines on the back here, but the panel is actually solid. There is a dust filter, but it's actually built in, so you're not going to be able to remove it for cleaning. And a really nice design feature, we've got the height logo here. And when you actually look through the cutout from the front of the case, you can see this when the motherboard's not installed. Taking a look at our top panel, you can see we've got similar design features here. And to remove it, there's a little gap at the back where we can push up, and then the panel can simply be lifted away. Take a look at the panel we've just removed. You'll notice we've got a dust filter, but it is built into the panel, so you're not going to be able to remove it separately for cleaning. At the top of the case, you're going to be able to mount up to a 360mm radiator, or up to three 120mm fans. You'll notice we don't have any holes for mounting 140mm fans or 280mm radiators, and there's no removal bracket at the top. You're going to screw your radiators and fans directly in to the top of the case. Another thing you'll notice is that Height have really continued their attention to detail in terms of aesthetics at the top here. We've got these panels stretching across here where the radiator would go. We've got additional details here. And importantly, not all aesthetics. They've made this little cutout at the top behind your radiators. So your radiator and fans installed here, they are going to block the ports at the top of your motherboard. And the idea with these cutouts is you're hopefully still going to be able to plug your cables in through here, even when you've got fans and radiators installed at the front. Take a look at our case's front I.O. So we've got a power button. There's two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. At the front of the case, we've got a tempered glass panel, and it is possible to build in the case leaving this in place. Although if you prefer to have improved access, it can be removed for the build process. It's held on with six screws. So there's two screws here in the rear compartment. There's two screws at the bottom front corner, and we've got two screws at the top of the tempered glass panel. With all six screws removed, the tempered glass panel can simply be freed up at the top, and then we just need to lift it out from the bottom. So you can see with the tempered glass panel removed, we're going to have improved access during the build, particularly if you were going for side-mounted radiators and fans. The downside to removing it is the tempered glass panel is actually structural and supporting at the top of the case. So you have to be really careful not to put extra pressure on the top of the case here, where you can bend it without the tempered glass panel in place. Moving into the main body of the case, and on the side you're going to be able to fit up to a 240 or 280mm radiator. And the Y40 can actually accommodate really thick radiators and fans, up to a maximum thickness of 115mm. If you prefer at the side, you can mount up to 220 or 240mm fans. 
At the rear of the case, it's up to a 120mm fan, and the case comes with a 120mm non-ARGB fan pre-installed. Taking a look at the fan cable, you'll notice it's got a 3-pin connector, so you are going to have to run it in DC mode. Now, I'm planning to use Lian Li's Unifans. They're going to have ARGB on them, and I think they're going to look better than this non-ARGB fan, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this. In terms of motherboard support, the Y40 is compatible with up to ATX motherboards. Unfortunately, an ATX motherboard won't fit. I did try it out. It does extend over to here, blocking the main cutouts to the right-hand side of the motherboard. And then if you have 140mm fans on the side, basically they touch the ATX motherboard, so you'd have no space to bring your cables through. In terms of air cooler support, the maximum height supported is 183mm. Although I think your major problem is going to be here, the fact that you have to mount your graphics card vertically in this case. So the graphics card is going to be extending up this way. And any large premium air cooler, it's going to actually block on the graphics card rather than the height actually being the limiting factor. So as we've mentioned, you're going to have to mount your graphics card vertical in the Y40. And height include this lovely Gen 4 riser cable where they've matched the color of it to the actual color of the case. Um, in terms of your graphics card, you've got absolutely loads of room in this case. It's up to a maximum length of 422 millimeters. And again, in terms of thickness, you've got absolutely loads of room as well. There's up to 94 millimeters of space, although to keep it away from the timber glass panel, I'd recommend keeping a maximum thickness to less than 80 millimeters. You can see we've got four full-sized horizontal PCI expansion slots here. So hopefully even with a large graphics card, it's going to be well away from the tempered glass panel. So in terms of getting airflow to your graphics card, you'll notice we've got this vented panel the whole way along the front of the case. And in terms of aesthetics, the lines continue into this L pattern up here, but there's no ventilation here, bringing all the ventilation in at the front of the case, up the tempered glass panel, and into your graphics card's intake fans. Another really nice feature that they've continued on from the Y60 is this cutout here for your PCIe cables. So they're designed to come up through here directly from the bottom compartment, which is going to help with cable management at the back and into your graphics card looking nice and clean and tidy. So as we mentioned, you've got four full length vertical PCI expansion slots and we've also got seven of these horizontal shorter slots. Now these are too short to allow you to install your graphics card in them. So as we've mentioned, you are going to have to mount your graphics card in the vertical slots. But if you did want to install, for example, an add-in card in behind your vertical GPU, you are able to do this. And the riser cable for our graphics card is installed in the top slot. So to allow us to actually get our motherboard in, we are going to have to loosen it up by removing this top screw. And with the screw removed, the riser card is now free to be tilted down, allowing us to install our motherboard. And we've just got some plastic protection on the riser cable that we need to remove. On the bottom of the case, we've got two nylon dust filters. And again, I haven't missed the opportunity to add a little bit of bling to the design of the filters. So to remove them, you simply tilt them out and pull up. And you'll notice we're going to have to pull the other one out from the other side. So we'll turn the case round and then we should be able to tilt out and lift away. Moving into the rear compartment, it's good to see we've got cutouts in all the right places, and it's nice to see that the cutouts onto the underside of the motherboard actually come up from the bottom of the case rather than through here, which is great because the cables aren't going to get in the way of the side panel going back on again, and it looks like we've got plenty of cable tie-down points. In terms of drive mounting, we've only got one location on this case, and it's in this removable bracket, which is held on with a thumb screw at the top. Once the thumb screw has been loosened, the bracket can be lifted away. And on this bracket, you're going to be able to mount either two 2.5 inch drives or one 3.5 inch drive. Down at the bottom of the case, we move our case cables out of the way. You'll see we've got our case accessory box. So we'll take it out, and I'll show you what it contains in a minute. So the Height Y40 is compatible with full-size ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 224 millimeters. And if we take a look at the back of the case, there's no removable power supply bracket, so we're going to slide our power supply in from the side before screwing it in from the back. And just before we leave the rear of the case, you'll notice that we've got these cable tie-down points for managing the cables coming from your motherboard and graphics cards. 
If we take a look down at the bottom of the case, you'll notice that we've got a 120mm fan pre-installed sent to intake at the bottom, so it's going to hopefully bring cool air up and into your GPU. It is also possible to mount a 140mm fan at the bottom, and we've got larger mounting holes here. I'm planning to install a 140mm fan at the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this fan. Giving you a look at what's contained in the case accessory box, so it's great to see that our screws are individually labelled. So we've got these ones for the motherboard and SSDs, we've got screws for our power supply, and screws for our hard drive. We've got the standoff insertion and removal tool, we've got some cable ties, and we've got an audio splitter cable. We are now ready to start working on the motherboard, where we're going to be installing our CPU, the bracket for our CPU cutter, our M.2 SSD, and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To install our CPU, we're going to need to open the socket cover, so we need to push this lever down and out and all the way towards the middle of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to lift the socket cover up. We can then set our CPU down into the socket, line it up with the notches at the top and at the bottom. We can then close the socket cover over again, and start to close the lever down, and as we do, the black bit of plastic will pop off, which we'll put into our motherboard box for safekeeping. Next, we've got our M.2 SSD, so we're going to need to remove this heatsink, it's held on with two screws. We can then set our M.2 SSD into the socket, insert it at a slight angle and wiggle it into place. And you'll notice that whenever we flatten the drive down, the same screw that's going to secure our heatsink is also going to secure the M.2 SSD. Just before we return the heatsink, if you're using the motherboard from new, you'll have some plastic protection on the back that you're going to need to remove. Next thing to do is install our RAM, so we're going to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. Then we can line our RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy we've got everything lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the RAM, and it's going to clip into place. And then the same thing with our second stick, line it up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, again some firm pressure, and the RAM is going to clip into place. Next we want to install the bracket for our CPU cooler, so the first thing to do is remove the stock clips, they're held on with two screws. Then we've got one of these clips to go on each side, you'll notice there's a little arrow saying towards CPU, so we're going to have to make sure we put it on the right way round. And then we're going to use the original screws to secure the brackets into place. We can then set the motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. And we can then secure the motherboard into place using nine of the screws from the case accessory bag. Don't get tempted at this stage to plug the riser card into the motherboard, it will block all the ports at the bottom of the motherboard, so we're much better to get all our case cables plugged in before we install this. I've just held it to the side with one of the cable clips from the case cables, um, until I'm ready to install it. So our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push it into place, and pull the excess cable through to the back. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header at the bottom right of the motherboard, and Height have been really nice and organised them into one cable for us. So we just need to line this up with the header on the motherboard, and push the cable into place, and again pull the excess cable through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place, and pull the excess cable through to the back. Our Type-C connector is just below this one, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place, and again pull the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our power supply, and this power supply is fully modular, meaning it comes without any of the cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged in the ones that we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 24-pin cable, our 12-volt high power cable. I've also plugged in two 8-pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU and one SATA cable, although we're not going to be installing any SATA drives, our Lian Li Unifan controller is going to need SATA power. I've also plugged in some white cable extensions for our 24 pin, and also our 12 volt type power connector. I haven't plugged these in for the EPS cables, because once we install our radiator at the top, it's going to hide all the connections to the top of the motherboard, so we're not going to get any benefit from it, but cable management at the back is going to be easier without the cable extensions. So these cable extensions are completely optional. Um, this power supply comes with really nice braided cables, so we've got one for the 12 volt high power, and also for the 24 pin connector. 
Um, part of the reason I use the cable extension is a bit of a test to see how easy it is to cable manage with cable extensions and whether you should or shouldn't try this. The other important thing, this is our power supply's intake fan, so we're going to want to install it facing down the way. And then we can secure the power supply with four screws from the case accessory box. So you'll notice our power supply has this silent zero fan button. So this means when the power supply is under low loads, the fan in the power supply will stop spinning, helping reduce noise. So we definitely want to turn this on. Our EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top right of the motherboard. So we can bring them through the cutout, line them up with the headers and push into place. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then you'll notice our cable has got some cable combs to help organize the cable. We're now ready to start working the I.O. and rather than use the fans that came with the I.O. to keep everything looking the same, I'm going to use Leanne Lee's Uni fans. Obviously this is going to come at extra cost if you don't just have these sitting about. Um, so I have done a full build using this I.O. with the original fans and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So the first thing for us to do is link our Leanne Lee Uni fans together. So they simply push into place and slot in like this. And that's all three of the fans linked together. On this end here, we can remove these little pegs to make more room for the other fans. And then on the other end of the fan, we're going to need to put our fan connector. It simply pushes into place here like that. And then we can set our Leon Lee Uni fans onto the radiator. And then we can use these long radiator screws to secure the fans to the radiator. Just before we set our I.O. into the case, there's two cables I want to plug in that we're going to need for the Leanne Lee Uni fans on the radiator. So it's a double splitter cable. I'm just going to bring it in through the cutout here at the top. And the first cable is a four pin PWM connector. We're going to plug into our CPU fan header. The other cable is a three pin five volt ARGB connector on it. And we've got two ARGB headers here at the top of the motherboard. So we'll plug it in to one of those. And we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. We can then set our I.O. into place at the top and then we can secure everything into place at the top with the short radiator screws. So you can see how this little cutout works at the top. You do have access now to the top of the motherboard to be able to plug things in. Although I do think it makes sense to plug them in before installing the radiator if possible. We can then pass the cable coming from our Leon Lee Uni fans through to the back. I'm then going to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. If you get the cutter from new, it will have thermal paste pre-applied. If you take a look at the CPU killer, you'll notice how I'm written the cables from the bottom just round the side of the cold plate up to the top, so it's going to help organise the cables. And then we can line the pump up with the bracket we've already installed. And then what we're going to want to do is get a thumb screw, one with a little lip on it, onto each corner. And then I'm just going to pass the cables coming from the I.O. through to the top. At the bottom of the motherboard we've got two USB 2.0 headers, so we'll bring the USB cable coming from the pump through and get it plugged in to one of the headers and then we'll pull the excess cable through to the back. We've got another USB 2.0 header at the bottom, so we can bring the cable for our Leon Lee Unifan hub through and plug it next to it. Then we've got the 4-pin PWM connector coming from the pump and it's going to go into our pump header which is just to the right of our CPU fan header which we've already plugged in. So we're going to be able to use this cutout to get it plugged in. So we'll bring it in through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we can just tuck the excess cable in at the top. Next thing to do is get our Leon Lee controller connected up. We've already plugged in this double splitter cable to our CPU fan header and an ARGB header and it's going to go into the bottom right of the controller. So it's just a matter of lining things up and then pushing into place. Then the other end of our USB cable is going to go into the middle port at the bottom. And then coming from the bottom left, we've got two SATA cables, which is going to provide power to our controller. So we can plug these into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. There's one and two. If we take a closer look at our controller, it's got four channels, one, two, three, and four. And coming from each group of Leon Lee Uni fans, we've got one cable. So I'm just going to plug this one from the fans in the radiator into channel number one. And one of the nice things about this controller, it's got a magnetic pad on the back, so we can just simply slot it onto here and it's going to sit in place. 
I've got another 120mm Lian Li Uni fan to go at the rear of the case. It will just about fit, it's going to be a really tight squeeze to get it in. Importantly, this radiator needs to go all the way to the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is pass the cable through to the back. And then we can slide the Lian Li Uni fan up into place. And then we can screw the fan into place at the back. Next we can set two SL Infinity 140 uni fans in on the side, set to intake. And we'll just pass the fan cable through to the back. And then we can screw the fans into place at the back. At the bottom of the case I'm going to set another SL Infinity 140 uni fan set to intake. And again I may be asking for trouble with this. If we had gone for the 120mm slots there looks like there's plenty of space behind it for our cables. The 140 slots there's really limited space for cable management and I have gone for cable extensions. But as I say the big reason I do this in the build is to test it out and if I struggle then you don't need to repeat what I'm doing. So we'll set the fan into place at the bottom. There we go. And then we can get it screwed into place from underneath. And then we can replace the bottom dust filters. Then it's just a matter of getting the rest of the fans plugged into our Lian Li Unifan controller. So our rear fan I'm going to plug into slot number two. We've got our side fans into slot number three. And then our bottom fan into slot number four. And then we can put the controller onto this little plate at the side. Next we're ready to install our riser card but I'm lining it up and it looks like it's actually going to go into the second slot down rather than the top slot. So we're going to need to remove the bracket cover for the second slot. And while we're here we're going to need to remove two of the vertical slots for our graphics card. We can then open the clip in the top PCIe slot on the motherboard. We can remove the plastic protection from the riser card and then we want to line the riser card up with the motherboard. Once we're happy everything's lined up it's just some firm pressure to the riser card and it's going to clip into place and then we can secure it into place with the screw we removed earlier on. Then we can set our graphics card into place line it up with the riser cable at the bottom and again once we're happy everything's lined up it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card and it's going to clip into place. And then we can get it secured into place with the two screws we removed earlier on. And then we can bring our 12 volt high power cable through, line it up with the graphics card. And once we're happy it's lined up, push it into place. And we've got a nice satisfying click. It's really important to make sure we push these cables all the way in. And again we've got some cable combs on the cable to help organise it. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management. So we'll get to find out how bad or good an idea it was to use cable extensions and install a 140mm fan at the bottom. So that's the build complete and I've gone ahead and got everything set up as you can see. I didn't record these steps because I've done it previously with another ASRock motherboard. You've got a full guide on how to install Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, go into the BIOS, update the BIOS and adjust all the BIOS settings. And the process for this ASRock motherboard and the ASRock motherboard I use in that build guide are going to be exactly the same. Also recently in my last build guide I've covered setting up this exact AIO and the Lian Li Uni fans. So putting this video together with those two videos you should be able to get your PC up and running and looking exactly as I have got it here. 
What I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing and then I'm going to get into the case review. So you want to hear what I thought about building in this case and what I actually think of this case and whether I would recommend you getting it for your next build. You're going to want to check out that video and again you'll find a link to that video in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. Yeah.